Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and uh, welcome to my review of this camera the Olympus OM2 Spot Program uh, 35mm single lens reflex camera made by Olympus in uh, 1984 and continued on till uh, 1988 uh, as I speak uh, to you, today's date is the 8th of uh, April uh, 2020 and as you, a lot of people will be aware we're in the middle of a rather nasty pandemic, coronavirus, so now seems like a, a good time to stay indoors and uh, do a review of this camera which I've been meaning to do for, uh, for a while and now uh, uh, with lots of time on my hands uh, and uh, staying safe indoors, I've uh, decided to do this review. But a uh, big shout out to everybody uh, in the NHS who are doing a fantastic job in the battle against this terrible disease. And to all everyone in the emergency services and all the ancillary workers and people who are doing a fantastic job to try and keep us all, try and keep uh, life as... Uh, normal as possible in these uh, terrible circumstances so uh, stay safe uh, socially isolate and uh, hopefully we'll get through this but enough of that back to the camera um, today as I say I want to talk about this camera the Olympus OM2 spot program um, with a name like that you would naturally think the OM2 spot program was a development of this camera uh, the Olympus OM2 which was its predecessor um, but really the two cameras have very little in common uh, the OM2 spot program was pretty much a completely new design uh, it moved on from the OM2 and uh, the body, in fact, probably has a lot more in common with the later OM4 series of cameras, uh, like the OM4T and the OM4TI, uh, uh, because, as I say, if you look at them, there are certain similarities. I mean, the uh, self-timer on the front is now electronic, whereas the one on the OM2 was uh, mechanical. Um, uh, certain other similarities in design um, uh, the camera had the uh, through the lens flash socket on the front um, whereas on the OM2 if you were using an off camera uh, flash you had to change the hot shoe uh, the hot shoe was interchangeable on the OM2 uh, whereas on the OM2 spot program and uh, the later OM4 series the hot shoe was fixed uh, couldn't be removed so uh, definitely some uh, more radical changes to the OM2 spot program um, uh, than uh, it's a lot more in common with the OM4 series as I say than the OM2 uh, so, really, I think you know the OM2 was Olympus's answer, probably to this camera, which was the Minolta X700, which was launched in uh, 1981 and uh, got uh, the European Camera of the Year award. Um, one of the main features of this camera was that it was a uh, exposure mode for try mode as you can see it had uh, not only a, a program mode it had aperture priority as well as a manual exposure so it had three exposure modes something which the Olympus OM2 didn't have because it only had uh, the traditional uh, aperture priority and manual it didn't have a program mode so in a way, this was Olympus's uh, answer to uh, Minolta 
and that that brought out a camera with three exposure modes in it for the first time uh, an Olympus OM camera had a program mode and as you can see from the selector switch on the top plate there if you move the selector forward you're into program mode if you move it to the middle section you have aperture priority and if you move it right back then you're in uh, manual mode so as I say, the OM2 spot program had three exposure modes, manual, aperture priority and program mode. Um, when you were engaging program mode it was important to remember that you had to set the aperture on the lens to its uh, minimum setting. Uh, that way, uh, as I say, when you were using program mode the camera would select uh, shutter speed and an aperture depending on the uh, lighting conditions uh, would set it completely automatically you didn't have to uh, uh, set aperture or shutter the camera would pick those f for you it was the first OEM series camera to have that feature uh, program mode so as I say this was uh, Olympus's answer to the Minolta X700 having three exposure modes as to what was probably more traditionally for Olympus uh, aperture priority and manual prior to that. Uh, the camera itself, as I say, it's very similar the body design to the OM4 series. On the front you have your uh, self timer here. Uh, if you lift that little lever up and move it to the right it is with your thumbnail uh, that would engage the self timer uh, in the middle there's nothing that's it switched off but if you move it to the left again similar to the OM4 that would uh, uh, disengage the beep which uh, you would get when uh, the camera was uh, overexposing you get uh, an overexposure warning which uh, gave an audible beep and then in order to disengage that you could move that little lever to the left so again that was uh, very similar to the OM4 series cameras uh, which had that feature as well. Uh, again on the right hand side of the camera body you can see a little uh, little screw hole there. Uh, that means that you could attach the finger grip to this camera. Uh, same as the uh, uh, OM4 Ti. Uh, this one actually has the finger grip attached on it uh, but you could also attach that finger grip to the OM2 spot program to improve the handling of the camera so again the two bodies had a lot in common I say the OM4 series were launched in uh, I think the first one came out uh, in 86 so uh, it was uh, a successor to the OM2 spot program and uh, uh, whereas the OM2 spot program as its name suggests has spot metering in it uh, unlike the OM4 it didn't have multi spot metering it just uh, metered from a single spot um, and uh, it had spot metering capability but only a single spot you, could, you couldn't you could take multiple spot readings as you could with the OM4 series camera but it was uh, nice to have uh, that because uh, otherwise uh, the camera in aperture priority mode and in program mode it metered in uh, center weighted mode so it was nice to have the option of spot metering in the manual mode. Um, again, as I say, on uh, it was very similar uh, to the later OM4 Ti and 4T series in that uh, the uh, shutter mechanism around the lens was very similar. Uh, as you can see, it has marked in red the mechanical speeds, it had two mechanical speeds uh, the B setting and 1 60th of a setting uh, 1 60th of a second mechanical speeds so that should the battery fail on the camera 
you still had the option of uh, 1 60th of a second shutter speed so uh, that was a handy feature again the OM2 didn't have this feature it was uh, it was uh, completely electronic and if your batteries failed on this camera uh, it was uh, just dead you didn't have any option at all uh, whereas I would say the OM2 spot program you had the option of a mechanical 1 60th a second and B <coughs> as backup again on the right hand side uh, we have the uh, uh, button here which is the viewfinder illumination uh, if you press that little button in it would uh, light up the viewfinder inside um, similar Again to the OM4 series, uh, which uh, had a similar button on the right hand side, which if you pressed uh, again it would light up the LCD display <coughs> and the viewfinder uh, under dim lighting conditions. Uh, the difference between these two was that uh, the window for uh, ambient uh, lighting of the LCD on the spot program the actual window was here uh, on the camera body whereas on the 4T the <coughs> ambient light window was above the Olympus on the uh, pentaprism so uh, slight difference there I think the, uh, it was a better design on the 4 series because uh, you could actually uh, obstruct that with, accidentally with your finger when you were holding the camera so it was better it would have been better placed on the pentaprism, so a bit of a design food by there, but uh, at least uh, uh, it uh, did uh, eliminate the uh, LCD and ambient light. Uh, again, the top plate on this camera, on the left hand side, uh, you have your exposure control lever. <coughs> um, if you move it forward you get a, a battery check function you hear a little audible beep and the light on the front will light up so that gives you an audible beep to check that the batteries are okay again this camera uses two uh, SR44 batteries two button cell batteries uh, you could use the LR44s, but like the OM4, you're better with the SR44s as they lasted uh, longer. Uh, typically, uh, about a uh, about a year with the SR44s, but LR44s you'd only get about six months out of them. Uh, back to the exposure lever, I'd say right forward. Uh, you engaged program mode, but you had to make sure that the aperture was set to the minimum aperture on the lens. In this case, this 50mm, that would be f16. You had to uh, make sure that it was set to minimum aperture. Uh, so that the camera would expose correctly in program mode. Uh, if you moved the lever to the middle, you were on auto. So that's... Uh, traditional aperture priority mode on the Olympus OM camera so you just selected your aperture whichever aperture you wanted and the camera would uh, choose a matching shutter speed uh, right back uh, then you were into manual mode so you then had to set uh, your shutter speed and uh, your aperture and uh, line up the LCD display in the viewfinder to get a correct manual exposure. Uh, the uh, rewind lever was just a pretty typical rewind lever, nothing special about it there. Just a little uh, arm flicked up and you could rewind your film. Uh, but you first had to press this button here with the R marked on it, you press that down. That was your film rewind button, which was on the top plate on the camera. Again, similar to the OM4. Uh, the film speed setting is here on the right hand side. Uh, this little window here. You can see the film speed that you had selected. In this case, it's set to it's currently set to 400 ISO. 
to change that again you just lift it up the wheel and move it and uh, there we go we could set it down to for instance 200 ISO uh, and again your exposure compensation uh, if you wanted to dial in it's in one third of a stop increment so you just uh, move this wheel without lifting it and uh, that would give you exposure compensation you could either overexpose or underexpose up to two stops in one third of a stop increments so a nice feature there as well again the shutter release button is here and it's threaded for uh, traditional uh, cable release so uh, typical uh, manual cable release no fancy electronic uh, release on, on this camera just a traditional mechanical uh, cable release uh, that's your viewfinder uh, your uh, exposure counter window uh, in the right hand side there uh, on the back nothing much on the back just the film uh, you could tear a bit off the film box, put it in there to remind you what speed of film you were using. Again, to open the back, you just uh, pulled up on the, the rewind lever and that would release the back, uh, open it up. And uh, there you can see the shutter again, like it's a traditional Olympus shutter, uh, cloth, uh, focal plane, horizontal run shutter. And the speeds on the shutter on the OM2 spot program uh, ran from uh, one second up to uh, one one thousandth of a second. Uh, the OM4 series they beat that because they actually went up to one two thousandth of a second, but uh, the OM2 spot program it only went up to one one thousandth of a second. So not not a big difference, but. Uh, it was nice uh, on the OM4 series that you got that one two thousandths of a second. Um, like all Olympus uh, OM series camera, the shutter uh, speed control is rather unconventional in that it's around the lens throat. And uh, you change the shutter speed by moving the ring around the lens throat. And lining it up with uh, the red mark there to select whichever shutter speed you wanted and if you were using the camera manually again there's two different colors here uh, blue and white uh, the blue indicates the maximum sync speed of the electronic flash uh, Olympus OM cameras use T-series electronic flash guns like the T20, the T32, T45 could all be used uh, but the maximum sync speed on the OM2 spot program was 1 60th of a second unlike the, the uh, fancier OM4 TI which had uh, the uh, fancy F280 flash gun which uh, meant it could synchronize up to the maximum 1 2000th of a second but only with the F280 flash gun uh, the OM2 spot program, as I say, uh, just used the uh, maximum sync speed of 1 60th of a second. So a bit limiting uh, in that respect. Uh, I'll say the flash moved on a lot uh, on the OM4 series, the OM4 TI rather, uh, as far as sync speeds went. On, uh, the bottom of the camera, the bottom plate, again, pretty traditional Olympus OM. On here's the battery cover for the uh, S2 SR44 batteries that went in there. Uh, that there is the little plate that covers up the hole for the motor drive or winder would uh, attach to the camera. And again, you can see the electronic pins for the uh, motor drive or winder which the OM2 could take either the motor drive uh, the Olympus which ran at three frames a second maybe th maybe three and a half I'm not sure or the OM winder 2 which ran up to two frames a second uh, there's your uh, tripod mounting screw there as well 
Again, on around the lens throat, you'll see the uh, socket for a traditional PC flash and uh, the B lock button, which you use to uh, disengage the shutter speed ring when it's in um, its mechanical uh, setting. Again, you have to use that B lock to either move the shutter speed dial uh, into that uh, mechanical setting. It won't go in there unless you depress that B lock button uh, in order to engage the mechanical shutter speeds. Uh, but uh, that's the same as the OM4 series. You have to uh, engage that little B lock button to. Uh, be able to engage the mechanical shutter speeds on the camera. Um, typical OEM, all OEM cameras have uh, the lens release button here on the lens, it's not on the camera. Uh, all OEM Zyco lenses are the same in that you depress that button there, turn the camera, the, the lens anti-clockwise and it comes off. Again you mark uh, match up the two red dots turn the lens clockwise and it clicks into place to engage. Um, another feature of Zyco lenses, Olympus Zyco lenses is that they actually had the depth of field preview button on the lens it wasn't on the camera. As you can see there that's the depth of field view preview button and uh, if you press that you can see the aperture closing down inside the camera. And the depth of field preview button was on the lens, not on the camera. So there was no actual uh, depth of field preview button on the camera. It was built into the lens. Another unique feature of uh, Olympus Zyco lenses. And as I say, this is uh, it's quite a nice camera. Uh, the uh, ISO settings, the speed uh, runs from 12 ISO right up to uh, 3200 ISO. So quite a, quite a broad exposure range there for different types of film. So uh, certainly uh, nothing lacking there. Uh, nice camera, the OM2 spot program. As I say, it ran from uh, 1984 to 88 and uh, then it was uh, really superseded by the, the OM4 series of cameras but uh, a very nice camera first one to uh, offer a spot metering option built in um, only in manual mode though, uh, the spot metering uh, didn't operate in either aperture priority or program. Uh, again, you were using uh, center weighted metering. If you used either aperture priority or, or program mode. But it was nice in that uh, again this camera for the first time off offered a program mode. Whereas previously uh, on other Olympus OM models you didn't have that option. And uh, uh, you had the three exposure modes. Uh, the spot metering, as I've said, was just a, a single spot reading. It didn't have the fancy multi-spot reading that the OM4 series had. But uh, it was uh, nice that it uh, had a spot metering option as well, rather than just uh, center weighted metering. So all in all, the OM2 spot program was a, a very nice... Uh, camera. It's uh, one that I like a lot. Uh, I suppose you know the program option is, uh, is a nice touch for uh, point and shoot photography although you still had to manually focus the lens because as I say all these cameras all the Olympus uh, OEM series were all manual focus. Um, I think the big game changer came in uh, 1985 when Minolta uh, launched the 7000 series camera which was autofocus 
And it's really like the first uh, autofocus, proper autofocus 35mm SLR film camera. And that was a, that was a game changer because uh, from then on all these uh, manual focus cameras, they really became redundant because that was the, about 1985 was the beginning of the autofocus area, era and uh, uh, manual focus uh, rapidly fell out of fashion uh, as uh, autofocus became the new norm. Uh, sadly it's, uh, it was uh, the end of an era and the beginning of a new one but uh, as I say the Olympus did soldier on with the OM4 uh, TI until about 2002 but by then as I say the writing was on the wall for uh, manual focus cameras and everybody had by that stage moved on to uh, autofocus so sadly uh, it meant uh, after 2002 when they retired the OM4 Ti, that was the end of uh, the Olympus OM uh, series uh, manual focus cameras, which is a great shame because they really were uh, beautiful cameras, beautifully built, um, and uh, the functionality on them was uh, second to none. But as I say, uh, times move on. Uh, things change, nothing ever st stays the same in the world of photography and just as uh, autofocus was a game changer uh, later on of course we all know that uh, digital cameras came into use and uh, film had pretty much then had its day and became, uh, although there's still a great interest in film nowadays the vast majority of people now use uh, digital cameras and uh, the days of uh, film are uh, in the minority, shall we say. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little review of uh, the Olympus OM2 spot program camera. 35mm uh, SLR, tri mode, tri uh, exposure modes, uh, program, aperture priority, and manual with spot metering in the manual mode. So uh, an interesting Olympus OM camera um, one that uh, certainly although it didn't have a particularly long production run, run from the 84 to 88 it was certainly uh, a, an, an interesting camera as far as the exposure modes went and uh, it sort of uh, signalled much more automation in uh, cameras in the 1980s as was with the Minolta X700 uh, which was also a tri uh, exposure mode type camera with uh, program aperture priority and manual. Uh, these automated modes seem to become in more and more into cameras uh, in the 1980s, but as I say, the successor to this camera, the X700, the Minolta 7000, which had an autofocus capability, really marked the end for all of these uh, manual focus cameras, and uh, I suppose the rest is history really. But uh, I hope you enjoyed that little quick review of the Olympus OM2. Uh, spot program and as I say if you want to see a full review of this camera here the OM4T uh, OM4TI they're the same camera as I say the OM4T was just uh, badged like that for the American market it really is an OM4TI under the skin it's the exact same camera I do have a do have a review of the OM4TI 4T on my channel as well if you want to have a look at that one so anyway, uh, in closing I'll say to everyone, I hope everyone stays safe there and that we get through this uh, horrible pandemic uh, that's uh, currently afflicting the world. So uh, socially isolate, stay indoors, stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll see you all on the other side. But uh, bye for now.